You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Marking usually gives me ideas for podcasts for this series. Recently I've been marking a load of second assignments from the Understanding and Interpreting the Bible course in which we teach the five steps. One of the things that's been striking to me is that many people need to really get the idea that at step one what we're looking for is a summary of the main point. So many people try to get everything in to make their summary a summary of everything. That's not the goal. The goal is to get at the main point. So for example, someone studying 1 Corinthians 1 verses 10 to 17. At step 1, the goal is to summarize the single main thing that Paul wanted to make sure the Corinthians got in reading this part of the book. Now, the passage is fairly straightforward. I appeal to you brothers and sisters by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose for it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you my brothers and sisters what I mean is that each of you says I belong to Paul or I belong to Apollos or I belong to Cephas or I belong to Christ has Christ been divided was Paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of Paul I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius so that no one can say you were baptized in my name I did baptize also the household of Stephanus beyond that I do not know whether I baptized anyone else for Christ did not send me to baptize but to proclaim the gospel and not with eloquent wisdom so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power so what is the main thing that this passage is about Well, one of the clues that often indicates to us the main thing that a passage is about is a repeated semantic field a set of words or ideas that cluster together in a common area and they get repeated and in this passage it's quite clear especially at the beginning that the words that are repeated are words having to do with unity I've picked them out but unity in this passage really is primarily at the beginning there's that longish chunk about baptism what's going on there is it just an excursus Paul often uses excurses excurses or excursi whichever you like to say is that what this is but look at the punchline at least if I've divided the passage up right and you can think about that for Christ did not send me to baptize but to proclaim the gospel and not with eloquent wisdom so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power it's clear that baptism is there so baptism is a significant issue within this whole conversation about unity but is it the most significant issue you see in that punchline there is also that bit about proclaiming the gospel so that the cross not be emptied of its power and it seems to me that that at least if you look at the beginning too and the same mind and same purpose stuff is what's driving Paul in this passage his concern isn't primarily with baptism though that's an issue that he thinks is important and worth using as an illustration the primary issue is unity so that they are in this of the same mind and the same purpose in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ the main thing it seems to me is something like be united have the mind of Christ disunity steals the power from the gospel now of course you haven't finished the job that's just step one but when you have the main thing now you know where to go with steps two three four and five is the advice about not following human leaders and baptism not being the main thing the main thing no is it a message in this passage yes and if you were preaching about not following human leaders it might be well be justifiable to use this passage and if you were preaching about baptism not being the main thing and incidentally why the name my denomination goes by is a bad name you might choose this passage but 
what the passage is really about and what if you were simply preaching the passage you should focus on is that unity in the mind of Christ is what we aim for because disunity steals the power from the gospel next time maybe at one or two of the other steps see you then bye <laughs>